VOA News. I'm Christopher Cruz reporting. Saudi Arabia's Foreign Minister Abdel Al Jubeir said Sunday his country made a quote huge and grave mistake in the killing of dissident Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi in its consulate in Istanbul earlier this month. The individuals uh, who did this did this outside the scope of their authority. There obviously was a tremendous mistake made, and what compounded the mistake was the attempt to try to cover up. That is unacceptable in any government. These things unfortunately happen. We want to make sure that those who are responsible are punished, and we want to make sure that we have procedures in place that prevent it from happening again. The foreign minister speaking on Fox News. He expressed his condolences to Khashoggi's family, but provided no new information on how the 59-year-old journalist was killed or what happened to his body or if Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, who is the country's de facto ruler, was involved. Also on Sunday, Senator Bob Corker, the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, told CNN he believes bin Salman was responsible for the murder. Voting continued for a second day Sunday in Afghanistan's first parliamentary elections since 2010. More than three million people voted Saturday. There was violence both days and technical problems, but also long lines at some polling stations. Full results not expected for a few weeks. King Abdullah of Jordan says he has decided not to renew parts of a treaty with Israel. Two parts of the agreement allowed Israel to lease two small areas of farmland from Jordan for 25 years. The deadline for renewal is later this week. The king gave no reason for his decision, but he has been under domestic pressure to end the lease and return the land to full Jordanian control. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu acknowledged Jordan's right to reclaim the land. This is VOA News. Large numbers of Central American migrants who had been stopped by Mexican police on a bridge at the Guatemala border Saturday crossed into Mexico Sunday by swimming across the river that separates the two countries. The marchers are mainly from Honduras. They say they are headed to the U.S.-Mexico border. Whenever a small gate opens to receive the Honduran migrants at this processing center on the Mexico-Guatemala border, there's a desperate crush of bodies that push forward in the heat. Some have even fainted. Mexico is giving out a small number of visitor visas, which in theory could allow some migrants to get to the U.S. border, something President Trump says he's ready to guard against. I will seal off the border before they come into this country, and I'll bring out our military, not our reserves. I'll bring out our military. Some migrants say they're fleeing gang violence. Others say they're in search of work. I'm Julie Walker. The U.N. Refugee Agency says people fleeing persecution and violence have a right to international protection. Correspondent Lisa Schlein reports for VOA from UNHCR headquarters in Geneva. The UN Refugee Agency does not question the sovereign right of any nation to control its borders, but it does say international law governs the way countries must behave toward refugees and asylum seekers. The UNHCR says it recognizes the arrival of thousands of Honduran migrants in the caravan at the U.S. borders will be overwhelming. But spokesman Charlie Yaxley says closing the border to the caravan is not a solution and will likely cause harm to those who have a legitimate fear for their lives. Dozens of people were hurt when a floor collapsed during a party in Clemson, South Carolina early Sunday. Associated Press correspondent Tim McGuire reports. One Clemson University sophomore says the first floor of an apartment complex clubhouse was packed with people, everyone jumping up and down to the beat of a popular song when the whole floor collapsed. That from Jeremy Tester, who was at the gathering, posting a video right after the floor gave way early Sunday morning. Another person there says he saw people with broken legs and ankles. Police say some 30 people were taken to hospitals. None of the injuries appeared to be life-threatening. At least 22 people were killed Sunday and 171 injured when one of Taiwan's newer, faster trains derailed on a curve along a popular coastal weekend route. All of the trains, eight cars derailed and five of them flipped over. Local news reports said that as many as 30 people remained alive for some time after the crash, trapped inside the cars in Yilan County. There's more on these and other late-breaking and developing stories from around the world, around the clock at voanews.com and on the VOA News mobile app. I'm Christopher Cruz, VOA News.